The claim that 97% of the world's scientists agree is pretty much the ace of Trump's in the whole climate debate. After all, who's going to argue against a consensus that strong, backed by so many experts? But what exactly are they supposed to agree on? If you look behind the curtain, no one seems sure what the experts actually said, or who they are, or anything. At first glance, it seems straightforward enough. In 2013, President Barack Obama famously tweeted that, quote, 97% of scientists agree climate change is real, man-made, and dangerous, end quote. In 2014, his Secretary of State, John Kerry, said 97% of, quote, the world's scientists tell us this is urgent, end quote. And that same year, CNN said, quote, 97% of scientists agree that climate change is happening now, that it's damaging the planet, and that it's man-made, end quote. That's pretty much what most people think when they hear the 97% slogan. Every scientist believes man-made climate change is an urgent crisis. But there are millions of scientists in the world. How many exactly were surveyed? When were they surveyed? Who did it? And what exactly did they agree on? Let's find out. I'm John Robson, and this is a Climate Discussion Nexus fact check on the 97% consensus slogan. To begin with, there are some ideas that pretty much all scientists accept. For instance, that birds are descended from dinosaurs, though that idea was once dismissed as highly eccentric. And when it comes to climate, you don't need a pole to tell you that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, meaning it likely has some overall warming effect. That's been known since the mid-1800s, and if you did do a survey, you would find overwhelming scientific agreement on that point. Also, there are lots of indications that the world is somewhat warmer now than it was in the mid-1800s, the end of a natural cooling period called the Little Ice Age. Finally, Virtually nobody disputes that humans have changed the environment of our planet by releasing emissions into the air, changing the land surface, putting things in the water, and so forth. These aren't controversial ideas, and they're accepted even by most climate skeptics. What we don't accept is that any of them prove that humans are the only cause of global warming, or that climate change is a dangerous threat. If 97% of scientists believe that, it would be troubling. Though even so, we'd still have to find some plan whose benefits outweighed its costs. At any event, that level of consensus that the problem was man-made and urgent would certainly be noteworthy. But the thing is, they don't agree on that. A close look at what survey data we have, and there isn't much, tells us, yes, there's a great deal of agreement that CO2 is a greenhouse gas to some degree, that the Earth has warmed in the last 160 years, and that humans affect their surroundings. But that same survey data also tell us there's far less agreement on everything else, including whether we face a crisis. So, where did this 97% claim come from, and why is it so widely repeated? The 97% claim seems to have begun with a historian of science named Naomi Oreskes, who in 2004 claimed she'd looked at 928 articles about climate change in scientific journals, that 75% of them endorsed the consensus view that Earth's climate is being affected by human activities, and that none directly disputed it. By 2006, in Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth, this finding had somehow morphed into a massive study of every scientific article in a peer-reviewed journal written on global warming for the last 10 years, and they took a big sample of 10%, 928 articles. And you know the number of those that disagreed with the scientific consensus that we're causing global warming and that it's a serious problem? Out of the 928, zero. That was a fib. 
Gore took a study that found 75% endorsed the idea that humans have some effect on climate and turned it into proof that 100% of scientists believe it's a serious problem. It does no such thing. And nor do the handful of other surveys on the subject. For instance, five years later, in 2009, a pair of researchers at the University of Illinois sent an online survey to over 10,000 Earth scientists asking two simple questions. Do you agree that global temperatures have generally risen since the pre-1800s? And do you think that human activity is a significant contributing factor? They didn't single out greenhouse gases. They didn't explain what the term significant meant. And they didn't refer to danger or crisis. So what was the result? Of the 3,146 responses they received, 90% said yes to the first question that global temperatures had risen since the Little Ice Age. And only 82% said yes to the second, that human activity was a significant contributing factor. Interestingly, among meteorologists, only 64% said yes to the second, meaning a third of the experts in the study of weather patterns who replied didn't think humans play a significant role in global warming, let alone a dominant one. What got the most media attention was that among 77 respondents who described themselves as climate experts, 75 said yes to the second question. 75 out of 77 is 97%. Okay, it didn't get any media attention that they took 77 out of 3,146 responses. But that's the key statistical trick. They found a 97% consensus among 2% of the survey respondents. And even so, it was only that there'd been some warming since the 1800s, which virtually nobody denies, and that humans are partly responsible. These experts didn't say it was dangerous or urgent because they weren't asked. So far, the claim that 97% of world scientists are saying there's a climate crisis is pure fiction. But wait, you say, there must be more. Yes, there is, but not much. Another survey appeared in 2013 by Australian researcher John Cook and his co-authors, in which they claimed to have examined about 12,000 scientific papers related to climate change and found that 97% endorsed the consensus view that greenhouse gases were at least partly responsible for global warming. This study generated headlines around the world, and it was the one to which Obama's tweet was referring. But here again, appearances were deceiving. Two-thirds of the papers that Cook and his colleagues examined expressed no view at all on the consensus. Of the remaining 34%, the authors claimed that 33% endorsed the consensus. Divide 33 by 34 and you get 97%. But this result is essentially meaningless because they set the bar so low. The survey authors didn't ask if climate change was dangerous or, quote, man-made, unquote. They only asked if a given paper accepted that humans have some effect on the climate, which, as already noted, is uncontroversial. It could mean as little as accepting the urban heat island effect. So, a far better question would be, how many of the studies claimed that humans have caused most of the observed global warming? And oddly, we do know. Because buried in the author's data was the answer, a mere 64 out of nearly 12,000 papers. That's not 97%, it's one half of 1%. It's one in 200. And it gets worse. In a follow-up study, climatologist David LeGates read those 64 papers and found that a third of them didn't even say what Cook and his team claimed only 41 actually endorsed the view that global warming is mostly man-made. And we still haven't got to it being dangerous. That part of the survey results was simply invented by politicians and activists. Other researchers have condemned the Cook study on other grounds too. For instance, economist Richard Toll showed that over three quarters of the papers counted as endorsing the, even the weak consensus actually said nothing at all on the subject. And evidence later emerged that the authors of the paper were drafting press releases about their findings 
before they even started doing the research, which indicates an alarming level not of warming or of consensus, but of bias. The reality is that neither this study nor a handful of others like it prove that 97% of scientists believe climate change is mostly man-made, let alone that it's a crisis. And the fact that people who claim to put such stock in settled science accept such obvious statistical hocus-pocus is both astounding and disappointing. So what do climate experts really think? The year before Obama sent out his tweet, the American Meteorological Society, AMS, surveyed its 7,000 members. They got about 1,800 responses. Of those, only 52% said they think global warming over the 20th century has happened and is mostly man-made. The remaining 48% either think it happened but is mostly natural, or it didn't happen, or they don't know. And while it's possible that the three-quarters who didn't answer split the same way as those who did, it's also possible that committed alarmists are more likely to answer such surveys. In any case, it's a small sample, even of AMS members, let alone world scientists. There was one more survey a few years later by the Netherlands Environment Agency that claimed 66% of climate experts believed humans were mostly responsible for warming since 1950, which falls far short of 97%, even if it outperforms the other studies. A social psychologist named Jose Duarte, who specializes in survey design, published an analysis of that one, pointing out that they diluted the sample by including large numbers of psychologists, philosophers, political scientists, and other non-experts, making their results meaningless as a measure of what scientists think. Just as we find that the people who cite that 97% number are overwhelmingly not trained scientists, certainly not trained statisticians. So we're no further ahead than when we began. Most experts agree on the basics, namely that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and probably causes some warming, and that humans have some impact on climate, probably including some warming. But they actively debate the rest. How much warming will there be? Is it a problem? Should we try to stop it? Or adapt? Or wait and see? These are all important questions, and we need good answers. And there's the claim that many of the world's national science academies, representing hundreds of thousands of scientists across the globe, have issued statements supporting the consensus about global warming and demanding government efforts to cut emissions. The problem is, not a single one of those societies took a survey of their members before issuing their statements in the name of their members. The statements were put out by a small number of activists using their committee positions to make it look as though their views were shared by all the world's experts. But if they are, why didn't these authors survey their members before publishing the statements? There are a couple of other studies that claim to prove a consensus, but they run into the same problems. All they show is wide agreement on the uncontroversial bits. They offer no information about whether a majority of scientists think global warming is a crisis. And then they're spun wildly by non-scientists to tell us things they don't begin to say, often about questions they didn't even attempt to investigate. The problem isn't just that we don't know what percentage of scientists agrees with this or that statement about global warming. It's something much worse. All this talk of a 97% consensus amounts to a dishonest bullying campaign to stifle scientific debate just when we need it most because the question looms so large in public policy. As physicist Richard Feynman once said, quote, I would rather have questions that can't be answered than answers that can't be questioned. And that's especially true when we're asked to take drastic action based on those answers. Not long ago, that survey expert I mentioned earlier, Jose Duarte, warned his fellow scientists about the negative consequences of claiming consensus. He said, quote, It is ill-advised to report a consensus as though it is an aggregation of independent judgments. Humans are an ultra-social species, and dissent is far costlier than assent to a perceived majority. A scientist who contests the prevailing narrative on human-caused warming, or merely produces smaller estimates, 
will likely end up on a McCarthyite blacklist of, quote, deniers, end quote. Self-described mainstream climate scientists refer the public to such lists, implicitly endorsing the smearing of their colleagues. This is disturbing and unheard of in other sciences, end quote. The unfortunate truth is that there is strong political pressure for climate experts not to question claims of impending doom. Those who do so face deep personal and professional costs, including a barrage of abuse that can be highly unpleasant for people who mostly wanted to devote their lives to the quiet pursuit of knowledge, not to noisy polemics. And that means we should listen carefully to them when they feel compelled to speak out anyway. Whether they represent 50% or 10% or 3% of experts, what matters is the evidence they bring and the quality of their arguments. And on that, I would hope we have 100% agreement. For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson.